Hey you guys, so this is a job we just did yesterday. Pretty big job where a car dealership converted from a transformer bank, which fed underground, to a pad mount for a 200 to an 800 amp service upgrade in three phase. There was quite a bit of prep work done, the pad mount's in place already, as well as inside the building, the electrician, there was, there was a major swap out with their main breaker, all their bus work, all their gear. So they had a lot of that prepped as well. I thought this was really cool. They have these LED string lights. The power's not shut off yet, but they strung these LED lights all through the work area. So they're just setting up flashlights everywhere. So, but I figured that's pretty cool. I guess we'll see how well it works once the power's off. That's the old main breaker right there. You can see the spare duct where the rope's already in on the floor. They're gonna be pulling in, right now there's aluminum. I think it's 500 MCM aluminum. They're going to be pulling in a double run of 600 MCM copper and replacing that main breaker as well as all the cabinets. So the first thing we're going to do as well as the electrician did is, is check rotation. That's the most important part uh, with motors, especially AC and stuff in this building. We want to make sure that the final product does have the same rotation, which is either going to be clockwise or counterclockwise. Of course, there's no point in checking rotation at our pad mount because the wires are all being completely replaced. Even here at the main, the main's being replaced, but at that point, it'll be up to the electrician to make I'll sure that they don't cross Perfect. any wires. If in the end, the rotation is wrong, it's it's not a big deal. You just have to swap uh, two sets of wires. Right. Yeah. So this is the test switch we've seen in a few videos before. First thing we're doing is opening the test switch, shorting out the CTs never want an open circuit on energized CTs. We've got the CTs and the PT switches open. This is the cabinet with all the bus work where all the wiring goes from the CTs and the PTs to the test switch and ultimately up to our three phase meter. This will be one of the first steps of the job that I will be looking after is tearing apart all the CTs and PTs, all the wiring in preparation for the new gear. There's going to be a uh, different set of PTs and CTs being installed. I'll only be able to do that once the electrician rips all that gear out of there. So while I'm tearing this apart, we've got our crew, two-man crew outside. They have power shut off now. They're gonna dismantle that transformer bank. Start getting that on the go. And I'm gonna come in here and start ripping apart this this wiring. So the first step, there's a little shorting bar. We just seen that little brass bar. You do wanna make sure, you, we wanna get in the habit of always closing that brass bar. You'll see here, this is the cabinet where there was some prep work. It has the new CTs and PTs installed. The new ratio where it's an 800 amp service. The old, I believe it said it was a 200 amp. The old ones were 400 amp, not two. So the old CTs were 400 to 5 amp ratio. These ones are 800, which you can see right now in yellow. And these are the PTs, 3 to 1. So for those of you that don't understand the concept of PTs and CTs, CT is a current transformer. A PT is a potential transformer. Current, 800 is a lot of amps. So we transform that at 800 to 5 which is 160 for every one amp, so, or 160 to one ratio. So basically, if there's 800 amps flowing through the secondary system, the meter's only gonna see five amps of that. And then same with the PTs, we got 347 volts. That's gonna bring that down to three to one ratio, down to approximately 120. Basically, 360 volts down to 120. So I've got everything ripped out now. That shot we just saw a minute ago, I taped up the old wires and I pulled it back through the pipe and pulled through just uh, a pole line in case. It's, it's quite a run. There was, I think, three or four 90s between my test switch and that cabinet. So I don't want to try to shove that through by hand. So when I pulled that back out through, I did make sure I had the line pulled through. Although we were probably gonna move that location anyways. So better better to have it there than not. The end plan was to have just a little short pipe going straight across. So this is all the electrician's gear here. They've got a heavy duty rope, we just call it bull rope. 
and a tugger. There's already a P line blowing through the ducts, but they're gonna use that P line to pull through the heavy gauge rope, and then that Greenlee tugger to pull through the 600 MCM copper cable. Uh, three phase, so there's gonna be four wires per duct, a double run. This is the wire right here, full reel. I believe they said that reel weighed 5,000 pounds. So they do have some Greenlee equipment to mount that in preparation for the pull. Again, that's all up to the electrician, customer owned wire. So we're not really involved in that part. See the boys here already got the transformer bank down and out of the way. Those primary cables have not yet been energized. The, the taps or the risers, we call them sometimes, are still dangling down. So there's that pad mount was also never energized. We have to get permission from our dispatch before we get to that point. We're pretty much playing the waiting game now. We've got all the prep work done we can. I can't start wiring up that new stuff yet until the customer gets their new wires pulled in. So you can see here, the spare duct's already been diverted to the pad mount transformer. And there was a second pipe that was capped. That's the old one on the right that was going towards the pole. So they're simply gonna cut that off and make a 90 over to the pole. We're kind of helping them out here, just pulling out the old wire, just kind of give us something to do while we're waiting. So that, even though it's aluminum wire, it's quite heavy. We use oh, really? our boom to pull out the wire. <laughs> Somebody we lift that it up as high steel. as we can without getting oh, into the live phases. Oh, Cut it off. Makes it a whole lot easier to roll up. That way you're not using a forklift to drag around all the wire. The customer will probably just take this to the scrapyard. So we do two or three pulls with the boom. And then it gets to the point where there's, I don't know, maybe 75 meters left in the back. And we're able to just drag the rest out by hand. I was just taking that shot because every time we made a cut, there was a whole bunch of water that came out of that wire. I'm going to be doing a video very soon of uh, drip loops and how to keep water out of cables. That's just, that's all the old aluminum wire there in the ground. Those yellow flags are from the locates. Anytime there's digging, we have to get locates from gas, communications, our power company. So they're just about ready with their new 90 there, I'm putting in a brand new pipe. They'll have to blow a line through that one in order to pull the, the bull rope through. This is all contractors again. That's that's not up to us. We don't own that equipment. We do own the pad mount transformer. And we do have to be on site if, uh, if a customer is pulling wire in through our transformer. So this is all their gear. They've got what looks like a 5,000 pound block set up. A custom made mount, which looks... Look Pretty decent, I haven't seen one like that. Looks like it's gonna work pretty good. Primary cables, the boys prepped and terminated these 7200 volt elbows. I believe it was Friday before the power interruption. So the, the, the car dealership, it's still open for the day. The electrician set up some generators and temporary fed their office space. But the garage area is closed for the day while we do this work. Heading on inside, see how the boys are making out. They've Got one of the units open on the floor already. This is the setup now. Check this out. This is bad. That reel collapsed. Like I said, I, I believe it was five hundred or five thousand pounds. When they mounted that reel, there was just too much weight for a wooden reel. The supplier wrapped that cable around the reel for the electrician. Yeah. So they they do start the pull on the reel using the tugger. Once this thing's in action, you can see how it's kind of blocking the door. Once there's tension on that, you don't want to put yourself in the line of fire and crawl underneath that or anything. So kind of got them to hold on before taking up the tension. Got a few shots and got myself outside of the room. Take a look at it in action. You see we're bouncing off a 3,000 pounds of pole here. Using the cat stand puller. Pretty good setup. Things are moving along. However, I skipped quite a few shots here because it was moving along. I go outside, you can see here, the wires are still being pulled. And you can see right here, I believe the wire jumps a little bit. It's kind of pulling through and it stops and then makes a little jump. That's because the reel is, like I said, collapsed. 
it's it's spinning around. I didn't want to capture that on video because I don't want to like to show bad. I won't, I'm not going to call it a bad habit. It wasn't really a, a bad habit. They they attempted to continue the pole with the broken reel and realized it was no buenos. It's not going to work. So we actually gave them a hand here for the next hour and a half. We had to unwind that entire thing by hand and, and continue the pull. The second pull went much better. We used a horizontal mounted reel, so just basically spun on a turntable as it paid out. But we're getting to the point here where the wire's in and the boys are getting ready to terminate the secondary conductors. I think if you take uh, so take take this, go yeah, up to the go up to the connector, bring bring the gun bring the tool right up to the connector, put it alongside right here, uh, and flip it upside down, turn this, okay, put it right alongside it. Oh, oh, that's your depth. Okay. Oh. Now. Then you gotta tighten that up again. Get it where you want it. Yeah. Uh, I like it already. Get away. Okay. Oh. Oh. Pretty so silly. that set the depth gauge for the inside. So then we need to die 600 MCM aluminum. Oh, hang on one sec. Good thing I got the copper set. Here, open it flat so they don't all fall in. There you go. Six hundred copper. So just push Is on that. that push on the gray thing right here. Yeah, and it should lock in the hole. Yep. Yeah. We're gonna try. <laughs> yes, sir. That's that is, a, man. A, that's a game changer. That's sick. I'd seen it. So big thanks to Milwaukee for sending out this tool. It's the first time any of us have used it. I actually haven't personally used it yet. I let the crew use it as I was doing the inside work. One thing they had to do before bolting on those connectors, you can see they are all marked. We did want to verify their, their marks. So once they were tied in on the inside, we wanted to check for continuity between the two reds, for example, versus the red and white. Make sure the wires were all labeled properly. They do have the pipe inside now, so I can carry on with my work, pull through all those new wires, and then just fast forward 45 minutes or so, We've got everything wired up here. Those are the CTs. I was just taking a look at that brass clamp. Nothing's energized here now, so it doesn't, doesn't really matter the position of that, but before it is energized, you do want to make sure that clamp is open. The PTs are pretty much wired up like a transformer. You've got the source side wire, 360 volts, coming to the end, off the H1, and the H2 carries off to the neutral. And then on the secondary side, the load side would be basically the meter. So your X1 and X2 would be your hots and your neutral going to the meter. Whole lot of tools and equipment for the electricians there. They're going to be a while yet once, once we're done. But our, our work is done here now. Just kind of checking out, make sure the boys get everything all finished up here in the pad mount. Everything looks good there. So we are ready to energize up to the main breaker. They don't have a whole lot of their their sub breakers and sub panels tied in yet, but we can energize up to the main just to do a voltage check and firing up the metering equipment. Probably the most important part once you're at this stage is we're not gonna fire that out without communicating with everyone in the building that might set foot in that uh, electrical room. So we head off inside, let them know we're ready to go. They're going to clear out of the electrical room. 
and we're going to start tapping stuff on. So we got Scotty up in the bucket here. He's going to start tapping on the risers, which will energize up to the cutouts on the cable. He's just going to hang his AB stick that he's going to use to close out of the way. So he's not dragging that 12 foot stick around while he's up here. Very important when you're tapping on three phases like this, you can notice he's, he's going through to reach for the far one first. Last thing you want to do is tap on that road phase, and then while you're reaching towards the field, you've got a live line hovering around near your arms and elbows and whatever. So he's going to start with the field phase here and work his way back. That way it just maximizes his clearances towards the equipment. And of course those little flicks at the end helps seat that, that little saddle portion into that tap clamp. When you're installing any stick attachment, before you before you let go of the connection. Tighten it as much as you can and give it a little wiggle, a little shake, make sure it sits into place. So while he's doing that, Ryan is just going inside the building, letting him know that we are tapping on the cables. I always say when, when doing a step as important as this, you, you always want to confirm that step twice, whenever it's cutting a live wire paralleling. In this situation, we told the electricians to stay clear. We got outside, got the truck set up, tapped on after speaking with our dispatcher, went back in the building again to confirm once again, not only is the electrical room clear, but there's also someone standing by to make sure none of the workers, none of the other workers go into that room. Okay, just stand by. So just heading back to check out the situation inside. And Ryan's already on his way back out. Yeah. They're all clear? Good, got it. All clear to close. So also you don't want anyone in front of that pad mount once these are closed in either. It doesn't really matter the order in which you close these switches at that point. And last up, we are checking these wires are connected directly to the mains, which was, which is now in the panel directly to our right. Clipping red on red, black on black, blue on blue, verifying our rotation once again. Counter. Oh, there you go. Clockwise. <laughs> I had the meter upside down. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> And that's pretty much it, guys. The last step, we did a voltage check. I got some readings off the meter, and we're packing up, and we're out of here. Electricians will be here for a few hours yet, but after a 12-hour day work, time to head home. Thanks for stopping in, guys.